Hello, this is a Kerbal Space Program video. You guys love this game, huh? I have here a little tiny uh, jet. Um, I guess I would call it an SSTO, single stage to orbit. That's what all the cool people are calling these planes these days. Anyway, if you look carefully, you can see some um, massless parts. In particular, the uh, uh, cubicle, or no wait, I think I'm getting that wrong. What is it called? Anyway, it's called some kind of a uh, octagonal cubital strut on the back of that ion engine. And I know what you're thinking, maybe, that uh, that's going to prevent the ion engine from functioning at all, but actually, um, it does not hinder its function at all whatsoever. So, that ion engine uh, is going to produce the same amount of thrust as it would um, if it wasn't covered up on the ass end of it, and then covered up by a jet engine. Um, yeah, so the ion engines, they don't produce any type of, um, I don't know, uh, exhaust, I guess you would call it, in the game. So they don't really damage any parts. And since you're putting a physicsless part on the back of it, it's, it, it still functions properly. However, if you put a jet engine directly on the back of it, I'm pretty sure from the testing that I've done that it will diminish the function of it partially. I think it, instead of producing 2 kilonewtons of thrust, it'll produce like 1.3. And you can check it actually by clicking on it and it'll tell you, hey, this is not working out. So anyway, yeah, the uh, practical use of of uh, this configuration is pretty um, fun because now you can put an ion engine directly in the center of mass and in the center of thrust and you use just one ion engine you know maximum efficiency it just uh, really worked out to uh, do it this way and uh, I thought it was pretty cool because it doesn't work if you put like you know a jet engine attached right to the back of an ion engine and uh, right here what I'm doing is I've activated the ion engine and instead of thrusting down because I'm uh, losing air and my uh, jet engine is flaming out so what I'm doing is just uh, putting the thrust limiter down manually on the jet engine so that I can maintain um, maximum thrust on the ion engine and I'm just uh, trying to show you guys uh, how small of a plane that you can you know, put one of these little engines on. It's a really simple ion plane. And uh, the middle part, I was going to use a regular jet fuel fuselage, but then I stumbled across the uh, the very useful, uh, what is that called? The uh, engine nacril, whatever the hell that is. Anyway, it's a lighter than the jet fuel fuselage because it doesn't even carry as much fuel but also it has a little air intake on the top of it which I think is really really cool so yeah you can see there the ion engine and then directly attached behind it is one of those struts and again it's a physicsless part uh, there's a whole list of physicsless parts on the uh, Kerbal wiki page and it's anything from the ladders and uh, RCS fuel, or um, not the fuel, but the RCS engines, they're all uh, physicsless, so you can put a, as much as you want of these parts on your craft, and it's not going to account for any mass or drag, which is really, really helpful. Another thing is, is I see a lot of people using in their videos uh, different like types of uh, wings, and the only wings that I've been using in my designs are um, the Delta Deluxe winglet, which I have here, and the swept wing, because the reason being is that they're, they're lighter, they have a better uh, weight to lift ratio, and I don't understand why you wouldn't use them if they have the best lift to, to weight ratio, other than, of course, if you're trying to make your airplane look realistic or look pretty, but, uh, yeah, I'd, I'd rather have the uh, the lightweight performance wing instead of, you know, some heavy, heavy wing. And, uh, 
I'm gonna start making some other space planes. I just wanted to make this video um, to show you this little. I just thought my uh, laptop died on me. That was kind of scary. So anyway, I think I'm done my burn here. Or now I'm still going, and I'm waiting for my periapsis to get to no. Actually, that's not what I'm doing. I'm going to time accelerate here and get to the apoapsis. And then, right here, I'm going to burn my ion engine again. you got to be careful um, with the ion engine if you burn it on the dark side of the planet and you don't have any way to generate electricity. You will find yourself kind of stuck in space... Uh, not being able to orientate yourself with the uh, the torque of your command module or what have you. So right here I'm going to get my periapsis up to 70,000 meters. And <clears throat> right after I achieve that I'm going to turn ass backwards and go home. Yes, that's all I wanted to do is just get into orbit and then go directly back home. Just to show you guys that this uh, configuration of the ion engine actually works. Because I haven't seen it on any other videos on YouTube. And I thought it would be pretty helpful uh, for some certain individuals that like ion SSTOs. And I will be making some more videos in the future. I'm not sure how soon in the future it will be, but... I want to create a couple space planes and uh, maybe land one on Duna or something like that. But here I am uh, burning retrograde, and I'm I'm on the dark side of the planet, so like I said, I have to be careful not to run out of electricity. But it it uh, yeah, it's not gonna be a problem because I have plenty of batteries. Do to do to do, do. Come on. I think I got my periapsis down to about yeah, 43, 42,000 meters, something like that. And it's just enough to come in very gradually, get some drag off the atmosphere and park it right on the runway of the space center. As you can see there, I'm losing a lot of speed due to the atmosphere. And this is uh, not time acceleration. This is me uh, fast forwarding the video. It's a really, really tiny plane. Oh, man. It's supposed to snow tomorrow. I hope hope I get off of work. Oh yes, the uh, re-entry effects. How beautiful they are. And coming in... Oh, whoa, almost lost control there. My goodness. Alright. Another thing to remember about uh, the fuselages, or, wait, that's not right, not the fuselages, um, the cockpits, is that they do have some monopropellant in them, so it's always good to, uh, keep that in mind so that you are not, like, putting a bunch of monopropellant on your plane that you don't even need, because you already have some built into the cockpit, that's why I have a little art. RCS thrusters on the plane. Figure why not? It's already built into the plane, so. And coming in for a nice smooth landing. And take a look at my fuel. Pretty much gonna run out of fuel as I land on the runway. Beautiful. And that is it. I guess this is the part where I say goodbye. Until next time, have fun.